DXL Photo Lab 8's control point and control line are powerful masking tools that excel at isolating even the most challenging subjects. However, due to their unique functionality, beginners may struggle to use them effectively. Following up on my first video on this topic, I've compiled additional tips to help beginners master these tools and tackle any masking challenge with confidence. So let's get right into it. Before diving into the tips, let's briefly recap what control points and control lines are. Control points and control lines are local adjustment tools that use U-point technology for precise mask-based edits. A control point applies adjustments within a circular area defined by a central point. The effect is strongest at the center and gradually fades outward based on the radius you set. It automatically creates a mask based on the color, luminosity, and texture of the pixels under the central point. A control line, on the other hand, applies adjustments using a linear gradient. Unlike a control point, it relies on a movable eyedropper instead of a fixed point to create a mask based on color and luminosity. With this overview in mind, let's explore some practical tips. The first tip is creating a smooth mask with a control point. If you are a beginner, you might be tempted to use one big control point to mask the entire subject, as in this example. However, switching to a black and white mask, you can clearly see the mask is not smooth with abrupt transitions between the mask, which is represented by white, and unmasked which is represented by black areas. Adjusting the exposure, you can see this results in uneven adjustments. You might also try using several control points, but as you can see, it doesn't necessarily result in a smooth enough mask. To improve mask smoothness, try these two techniques. First, try to overlap control points. Place multiple control points so their areas of influence intersect or cover the same part of the image. This creates a more even mask with smoother transitions as shown here. The second technique is to adjust chroma and luma sliders. Lower the chroma and luma sliders to reduce the tool sensitivity to color and luminosity differences. This helps create a smoother mask as demonstrated here. When increasing exposure, you can see this results in a more natural looking adjustment. The second tip is creating a standard radial gradient mask. A standard radial gradient mask provides seamless transitions, offering a gradual fade from the center to avoid harsh lines or unnatural edits. Looking at the local adjustments toolbar, however, while DXO includes a dedicated linear gradient tool, there is no dedicated radial gradient tool. The closest alternative is the control point. So let's use the control point to simulate a radial gradient, brightening the foreground rock to enhance its focus. Switching to a black and white mask for clarity, you'll notice that simply adding a control point doesn't produce the smooth transition typical of a radial gradient. This is because the control point factors in color and brightness when creating its mask. The good news is you can transform a control point into a radial gradient. To do that, I'll set the chroma and luma sliders to zero. This removes their influence, creating a standard radial gradient, as shown here. Let's move on to another example. This time, I'll add a vignette to enhance attention to the subject. Once again, I'll start by adding the control point. Again, switching to black and white mode, you can see the mask looks nothing like a radial gradient. I'll reduce chroma and luma to zero. As you can see, that transforms it into a proper radial gradient. Unfortunately though, lowering the exposure, you can see the mask is incorrectly inverted. I'll fix that by clicking the invert button. And there you go, the mask has been inverted. Reducing the exposure, you can see the vignette is now correct. The third tip is to use a more powerful linear gradient. To understand the limitations of DxO's linear gradient tool and why you might prefer a more advanced alternative, let's use it to reduce the brightness in the sky. I'll start off by applying a linear gradient 
and lowering the exposure. As you can see, it effectively recovers detail and color in the sky. However, this adjustment has a downside. The foreground has now become overly dark. So how can you address this? Unfortunately, the only option for refining the mask is the eraser tool, which lacks built-in edge detection. As demonstrated here, it struggles to handle the complex edges of the foreground often spilling over into the sky. Since the standard linear gradient isn't ideal, let's use the closest alternative, the control line, which offers more sophisticated tools for mask refinement. I'll add a control line. However, as you can see, the mask is uneven because like the control point, it incorporates color and brightness during mask creation. Reducing the exposure produces unnatural and undesirable results. Fortunately, you can create a standard linear gradient effect using just the control line. To do that, I'll lower the chroma and luma sliders close to zero. I'll not reduce it all the way to zero so as to retain some sensitivity to color and brightness, which we will need later when we refine the mask. As you can see, this creates a smoother, more even transition. Reducing the exposure now yields a visually pleasing result comparable to the standard linear gradient. However, better than a linear gradient, the control line has a key advantage, the ability to refine the mask using a control point, which is far more precise than the eraser. I'll add negative control points by holding down the Alt or Option key while clicking. As you can see, this produces a more precise mask, resulting in a standout adjustment. The fourth tip is to use the control line as an alternative to the Hue Mask tool. The Hue Mask tool, introduced in DxO PhotoLab 8, is a powerful feature that creates precise masks based on an object's color. However, it is not flawless. To demonstrate, let's mask the background of this image. I'll select the Hue Mask tool and choose a color. As you can see, while the background is correctly selected, the subject is incorrectly included in the mask. Adjusting the tool's handles doesn't resolve the issue. There's no way to exclude the subject from the mask. The only refinement option is the eraser tool, and since it lacks any edge detection, it struggles to precisely mask the soft fur edges. So if the Hue Mask tool falls short, as in this case, the good news is there is an alternative using the control line, which sometimes can even outperform the Hue Mask. To demonstrate, I'll add a control line, ensuring the picker point is pointed to a background color. I'll increase the chroma slider to heighten the mask's sensitivity to color. As you can see, this approach works well leveraging the slight color difference between the background and the subject. Unfortunately, increasing chroma has also slightly darkened the mask in the background area, which was previously in pure white. Not what we want. Fortunately, the control line allows for further refinement using control points. I'll add additional control points to fine-tune the mask. And as you can see, we now have a precise mask that targets the background while correctly excluding the subject, even handling the complex fur edges with impressive accuracy. So there you have it, four more control point control line tips. I hope you found this video helpful. Let me know if you have additional tips of your own to maximize the use of these tools. Write it down in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.